Hello and welcome along on another landscape photography outing. Today on a grey and drizzly morning I'm back in Snowdonia. Now it's one of those days when getting up onto the mountain tops really isn't feasible because there's a really low cloud base. It's pretty grim and drizzly and not ideal. So what I thought I'd do is a quick whistle stop tour of some of the interesting points where you can get an image or two uh, but it doesn't constitute a full day out or a long hike. Now it's sunrise, it's a Saturday morning and you'll never guess where I've got all to myself. Yep, it's the Lone Tree at Lamberis. I was driving past and I thought, I wonder, it's early January, you never know, I might get the place to myself and I got lucky. Uh, and not only that, even though it's a really grim grey day, there's some quite nice definition in the clouds up Lamberis, so I'm hopeful of a decent image. Now, of course, people will tell you that uh, an iconic location like this is something that, oh, well, it's been done to death. Well, I'm not even going to dignify that argument with an answer. If you get an opportunity to shoot something like this, you definitely should, simply because no two days are identical. So you will always get a completely 100% unique image. So let's take a look at the settings I've got for this particular shot and let's see if I can pull it off. So I've got the camera down really low for this particular shot and that's because I want the main bowl of the tree completely in the sky. I don't want any of the mountain backdrop to be covered by the branches of the tree. I've seen images where people have done that and for me that's a mistake. You get much more isolation on the tree by just having sky behind it. Luckily the lake is pretty smooth and that means that I don't need to worry about a long exposure and I'm glad about that because I want the water to be smooth but I don't want to smooth out the sky. The reason for that is if I do that on a morning like this I'm going to end up with a simple flat slab of grey so all the interesting definition I'd be losing. I might compromise if the lake was really rough and I was desperate to smooth it out but there's barely a breath of wind today so I'm really lucky at the moment. Let's take another shot. Yep, happy with that. As I've mentioned on previous videos, once I've got my composition sorted out, I always, always take as many shots as I think I'm going to need. It doesn't matter, pixels are free of charge. It's not like when I used to have to get film developed. So I might take 50 shots here of exactly the same composition. I've decided this is the best composition, so I'm not going to start mucking about with that. But the light is changing. It's getting brighter by the minute. We're about 10 minutes away from sunrise, but it'll make no difference because it's hidden behind a cloud bank. My settings are a uh, focal length of 22 millimeters, obviously ISO 100, uh, F11, giving me about a second at the moment. Luckily, I've got here and I've got loads of shots in the bag because there's a couple of lake swimmers just moving right across my composition. I'm willing to bet the rate at which they're moving means they're probably going to be in shot for quite some time. And it sounds like one of them's about to drown. Okay, so I think I've got enough exposures in the bag. I did wait until the swimmers were far enough away that they're small enough to clone out easily, so no problem there at all. And, you know, it's a public spot. It's, everybody's entitled to enjoy it, so, you know, you shouldn't be too critical. Frankly, I think they're completely mad, of course. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's enough here. Let's head off and take you to a couple of other spots. <laughs>
Now you may recall that in my review of 2018 video, I said that I was going to try and do a series for people who've got mobility issues, who want to come to North Wales and be able to take great images from right by their car. Now I hadn't exactly decided what was going to qualify as right by your car, but as I was driving up from the Lone Tree at Lamberis this morning to where I am at the moment, I thought actually the Lone Tree would be a good candidate for that because you can park within 40-50 metres of where you're shooting and the access is completely flat. So even if you struggle, you should still be able to get to that location. So I was coming to where I am now thinking I'll make a standalone vlog here as the first of the park and shoot series. And I thought, well, no, there's other spots around here that I can include. So let's do that. So where am I? Well, I'm on an observation point on the A4086 between Capel Kiddig and Beth Gellert. It's just down from the Penegurid Hotel and the turn off down to Lamberis and Penna Pass. So it's really easy to find and I'll put a map up so you can see where I'm at. The great thing about this particular location is you could put your tripod on the bonnet of your car and get great images. I brought a group here in uh, early December last year and they spent 45 minutes to an hour here getting some fabulous images. So if you struggle with your mobility and you're coming to North Wales and you want to shoot the mountains, this is a great spot. Now, unfortunately, as you can see over my shoulder today, the weather is terrible. It's starting to rain. It's blowing a gale and it's really dead light. And there isn't any definition in the sky, so I'm just not going to bother getting my camera out today. But what I'll do is I'll put a couple of images up that I've taken from this exact spot so you'll get an idea of what can be obtained. Now this first one was taken in December with that group that I just mentioned. It's looking down the valley over Thin Gwynant with the layers of the hills fading away into the distance with some fabulous morning light. This image again from this exact spot handheld is Snowdon right dead center in the main Snowdon horseshoe and you actually have the whole horseshoe in front of you here so when the light is good there's loads of compositions from uh, Echluedd, Snowdon Summit, Crib Gorch, and up to Moyle Burveth above Penna Pass. So that's it for this particular location. I've got another one in mind. I might get a camera out there but it really depends on the conditions so come along I'll show you another spot that's worth stopping at and parking and shooting. Um, it started absolutely tipping down but you know what when you carry a military poncho you can keep your camera out of the rain when it's not weather sealed so don't laugh so I'm now uh, on the road again still between Capel Kirig and Beth Gellert but I'm now right up by Capel Kirig near Plaza Brennan outdoor centre and I'm on Llinai Mimbia which are the twin lakes separated by a little causeway what I was going to do was take a shot in that direction towards the Snowdon Horseshoe to demonstrate another of my bugbears about composition with mountains being an afterthought and loads of water in the foreground for no good reason. There's no way that's going to happen in this weather so you'll just have to take my word for it that it would have been really interesting. Well I thought that went quite well didn't you? So this is one of my favourite Snowdonia locations and a really good bolt hole when things don't go too well. Um, it's a toss up between Café Chabod and Pete's Eats in Lamberis, but I think Café Chabod shades it for me every time. As you saw, uh, having a military poncho can be quite a handy thing and I've used it many a time to uh, keep my not weather sealed camera equipment dry and even to use it as kind of a tent and poke the lens out to grab the odd shot when it's not too bad. But it wasn't going to work this morning, unfortunately. So what I did do is I got a couple of handheld images to show you, just to demonstrate that right by the car, there's lots of really good photography to be had. You've got the Snowden Horseshoe, you've got Moyle Shabod, Llinai Mimbia themselves, and it's a really good spot for sunrise because you get projected light onto the horseshoe. So what I'm going to do is go back there a little bit later in the year for a sunrise shoot to really show you what potential it has.
Well, I've really organized a full set of park and shoot locations for you on this one. This is the fourth location and it's right over the road from Cafe Chabot. It's a lovely little woodland walk where Avon Chligui runs down through Kapil Kirig. There's all sorts of photographic opportunities here. But now it's time for a pit stop and see if Nick's about so I can blag a copy of his book. So I'm relaxing with a nice cup of coffee at Café Chabot. Luckily Nick was here and I've bought a copy of his excellent book photographing the Snowdonia Mountains. I can't recommend this book strongly enough. If you've got any interest at all in f landscape photography or walking in the mountains and also one guy's really interesting journey to come and live in a place like this. What impressed me about Nick is that he decided he wanted to live in Snowdonia. So he packed everything up and just came here. Found somewhere to live, found himself a job and is now a fixture. He does have a bit of a reputation as being, shall we say, prickly. But what I've found is if you're polite with him, he'll be polite with you. Nick is an exceptional photographer. These are some of his prints available in the gallery at uh, Café Chabod. Absolutely spectacular. Such a pity he's not vlogging it. Well, this has been by no means my best landscape photography outing. I usually like to come home with a few more images. But that said, I've really enjoyed myself. You can't beat a spin round the mountains. I did get some images, one of which I've saved up to show you in a moment. And also, I popped in and saw Nick and got hold of a copy of his excellent book and I strongly recommend this. This is already just over a cup of coffee, my favorite Snowdonia landscape photography book of all time. You can pick up a copy at nicklivesey.co.uk and frankly, if you've got any interest at all in photographing Snowdonia, this is the book for you. It's got details of every single location, how to get there, when's the best time, basically all the stuff that I do, but in written form. Frankly, if Nick did vlogs as well, I'd be out of business. Anyway, hopefully next time I'll be able to get a few more images. But for this one, I'm gonna leave it here and say thank you ever so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your encouragement and support. Don't forget to leave me any questions in the comments which I'll cover on my next Ask Me Anything series. Uh, and of course, if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers.